How can doing drugs lead to success? And what is an arc lamp? And how is it related to this whole mess? Well, I'll tell you, and along the way, I'll talk about pre-Victorian drug parties, giant stinking batteries, science superstars, and chemistry for the female sex. Ready? Let's go. Electricity, 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 electricity. Humphrey Davy was born in Cornwall, England, to a farmer and a woodcarver. Davy lived in genteel poverty, with enough money for Humphrey to go to local school, but not more advanced, without help from his godfather. His brother described their upbringing as having, quote, little taste for literature and still less for science. Instead, they all delighted in hunting, shooting, wrestling, cockfighting, all ending in drunkenness. When Davy was 16, his father died, and his godfather got him a job as an indentured servant to a local surgeon and apothecary. The plan was for Davy to study to become a doctor himself. Meanwhile, Davy self-taught and worked in the pharmacy. He started to teach himself chemistry merely as a branch of his professional knowledge. Pretty soon he was hooked, causing his boss to complain, quote, this boy Humphrey is incorrigible. He will blow us all into the air. Meanwhile, the drug nitrous oxide or laughing gas had been discovered. A man named Thomas Beddoes decided that it might be good for people with lung problems. No one thought of using it as a painkiller for a further 50 years. Anyway, Beddoes started a pneumatic institute and he decided to hire Humphrey Davy to assist him. At the institute, Davy diligently conducted experiments on himself his friends, and all types of animals. Pretty soon, a group of doctors, patients, scientists, and poets were meeting at the Institute every night to studiously experiment with the drug. It was especially popular with the poets, like Samuel Coleridge and William Woodsworth. Another poet named Robert Southey wrote, quote, such a gas as Davy discovered, the gaseous oxide. I've had some, and it made me laugh and tingle in every toe and fingertip. Davy has actually invented a new pleasure for which language has no name. By the way, Davy didn't invent laughing gas, nor did he pretend to, but sometimes people forgot, especially after using the drug. Anyway, Davy produced a huge 580 page book on nitrous oxide. Almost immediately, nitrous oxide was used at laughing gas parties. It continued to be a prominent feature in both upper class events and traveling science shows for the masses for almost 100 years. For the upper crust of England, the handsome young Davy was the master of ceremonies and prolific practitioner for an astonishing new drug. Bristol and the Pneumatic Institute was not big enough for this rising new star. It was time to go to London. In 1799, a wealthy Englishman got together with his titled friends to create a new science institute in London called the Royal Institution. The endless war with Napoleon and France had landlocked many Englishmen from their international science pursuits, and he wanted a place for research, giving talks, and for, quote, exciting a taste for science among the higher ranks. The original 58 members were dukes and barons and members of parliament, basically every high-ranking man in England who had an interest in science, and they had an opening for a chemist and a lecturer. Davy's most important job was to give interesting lectures. In 1800, he gave his first public lecture in London on the hot topic of the day, galvanism, or reanimating dead animals with electricity. It was an instant success of grand proportions. From then on, when he gave his talks, they had to make the street in front of the building one way to help with all the traffic. Davy was not just lecturing, he was also a prolific researcher. He studied geology and architecture with the same zeal as chemistry, publishing paper after paper, but carefully not interrupting his busy social life with immense amounts of laughing gas or his avid fly fishing. Frankly, it's exhausting just reading about him. Meanwhile, in the same year Davy starred his lectures at the Royal Institution, an Italian man named Alessandro Volta found that if you stack layers of zinc and silver, or zinc and copper, with thin cardboard soaked in salt water, it would produce continual electricity. In other words, Volta invented the battery. 
A Scotsman turned Volta's invention on its side and put plates of copper and zinc in a rectangular box or trough that was filled with sulfuric acid and water. This was better than Volta's battery as the acid was stronger than the salt water and putting it on its side meant that you could use as many plates as you wanted without the weight of the metal squishing all the salt water out of the cardboard. Davy decided to use the trough battery to make the biggest battery in the world. He filled over 880 square feet of the basement of the Institute with 2,000 plates of copper and zinc and unmeasured gallons of acid, supposedly produced some off gases that smelled just awful. Why would a chemist want a big stinky battery? Well, it turns out the voltage from a battery can actually rip the molecules apart in a liquid and produce pure elements. In fact, when Volta first invented the battery, Science accidentally dis discovered that if you put the ends of a wire from a battery into water, then the ends would form bubbles of hydrogen and oxygen. The difficulty was in creating a fluid that could be decomposed into new elements. When Davy finally succeeded in 1806, quote, he could not contain his joy. He actually bounded about the room in ecstatic delight. Davy then isolated eight new elements and his lectures on his new discoveries cemented his place as one of the top scientists in England and possibly the world. While playing with his giant battery and chemicals, Davy noticed something strange. If his two leads were made of carbon and they touched, it could create a spark. If the rods were then slowly separated, the spark would grow bigger and bigger and create a constant and brilliantly strong light. In this way, he could get a four inch long, painfully bright light with electricity. In 1809, Davy first demonstrated his invention that he called an arch lamp as it made an arch of light, but was quickly called an arc lamp. This was the first practical electric light, although only useful for outdoor or demonstration purposes as it was between 10 and 40 times brighter than a 100 watt light bulb. Arc lamps were actually used for commercial purposes until the late 1800s when they were replaced by incandescent lamps. A comment about women in science at the time. Science was moving from salons run by wealthy heiresses to laboratories at places like the Royal Institution. For this reason, women were no longer involved in assisting experiments or promoting scientists. However, they were allowed to join in on laughing gas parties, sometimes with the hope it would make them more agreeable to their husbands. Women were also allowed to attend science lectures, and Davy was a leader in pushing for women's education in science. One woman, Jane Marset, who attended many of Davy's lectures, was initially confused by them. She then asked her husband for help to understand the basics and felt like it made Davy's talks much more rewarding. For this reason, she wrote an introduction to chemistry book, quote, intended most especially for the female sex, based on the chemistry in Humphrey Davy's lectures. Although the book was written for women, it was popular with men too, especially those with lower class backgrounds, as you didn't need to read Latin or have a formal education to understand it. In fact, it was one of the first elementary science textbooks ever written. In 1810, Marcet's book ended up in a bookstore in London and a young bookbinder's apprentice named Michael Faraday happened to read it. In later years, Faraday credited Jane Marset's book with teaching him how to experiment with chemistry. I will talk a lot more about Faraday in the next video. Anyway, back to Humphrey Davy. In October of 1812, Davy had an accident in the laboratory. He was leaning over some chemicals and they exploded and severely damaged his eye. According to his brother, it's surprising he didn't have more injuries as Davy was an excited and disorganized experimenter and quote, exposure to danger was an everyday occurrence. It took Davy a few months to recover and therefore he needed an assistant. Davy ended up hiring Michael Faraday to help out. The same person who I mentioned had started experimenting with chemistry because of Jane Marset's book. Davy didn't know it, but Faraday would soon eclipse him as one of the most innovative experimental scientists the world has ever known. How Davy helped Faraday escape poverty, only to eventually turn on him, starts next time on The Secret History of Electricity. Electricity, electricity.
Electricity, electricity. Thanks for watching my video. Please remember to give it a nice thumbs up. If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend the video on how Volta invented the battery. Also, you have to check out the next video on Faraday because it's Faraday. Trust me, you have to. Also, make sure to join my YouTube channel, Kathy Loves Physics, my Facebook page, Kathy Loves Physics, or check out my webpage, www.kathylovesphysics.com. Okay, have a good day.